if we went to these. <laughs> I do feel like. <laughs> Good evening. This is Harold Watson, zoning chair of the Stratford Zoning Commission, that now sits for its monthly administrative meeting on Wednesday, September 13th at 6 o'clock. The quorum for the meeting is three, and I will now call the following elected commissioners. Zone 1 Commissioner Jim Bigliotti. Here. Zone 2 Commissioner Dion Francis. Here. Zone 3 Commissioner myself, Harold Watson, here. Zone 4 Commissioner Deborah Lamberti. Zone 5 Commissioner Len Petricelli. Here. We are very fortunate tonight to have our, all of our alternates, Linda Manos, here. Rich Fredette, and Chris Zahave. We welcome Jay Havansky, our Planning and Zoning Administrator, uh, Gail Basilio, our Reporting Secretary, Patricia Sullivan, our Zoning Legal Counsel, and Daniel Brennan, Daniel Brennan our CBA person. First, I want to sincerely thank Jim Piotti for sitting in his chair during my absence. He did a remarkable job, as did the rest of the Zoning Board. Next, we will vote to accept the minutes of August. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to. Someone give me a motion. No, we have to have a motion to open the meeting. Motion to accept the minutes. Second. Okay. We will now move to. Oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, eight zero. But okay. Uh, next, we will vote to. Uh, now we'll move to. Uh, the main I item on our agenda, which will be fil facilitated by Robert Collins uh, of SLR. He's going to sit down here. Hopefully, we'll be able to have some kind of intimacy in our gathering tonight. Please, if you'd like, write down a question as we're going through it so that we can keep everything moving quickly, uh, particularly if you guys want to get out of here. So. Just jot down a question as you're as we're going through this. We, then we'll do questions afterwards. Is that okay, or do you want to stop and do questions? No, I think that's fine. I, I'm going to try to go through a broad overview quickly so that we can get right to questions or comments. Okay. I will honestly tell you, I sat down and read all of the documentation today. <laughs> There's a lot of information <laughs> that. that, that all of you need to get familiar with. Um, and if you can go through that, Robert, if you can give suggestions of what we need to have everybody familiarize themselves, existing zoning, the POCD recommendations, what your, what your documents are, those are three things I think that are really critical that all of us get clear on, particularly before our first open house next week. Uh, with that being said, I'd like to introduce Robert Collins. Okay, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to see everybody again. I'm Robert Collins with SLR. Um, it's hard to believe that it's been, it's already been two Robert, months. Robert, pull the mic closer to you. It's already been two months since I saw you all last, but it's um, a pleasure to be back. Um, we have been very busy since we kind of kicked things off with you and uh, introduced ourselves uh, at the July meeting. We have been busy, uh, my team has been busy uh, analyzing the existing zoning code as well as getting the uh, story map, uh, which is the project website, kind of up and running. Uh, we're also working on a, um, like a promotional video that will be able to be used for social media as well as posted on the story map. Um, I believe that on Friday or Thursday or Friday, uh, Jay got the project uh, story map up and running on the, on the town's website. So if you all haven't had a chance to take a look at it, please take a look at it. Um, uh, it will be something that we're gonna be continuing to update, obviously, with events and information and documents. But there's also a unique piece, uh, which is uh, the, the, what we're calling the planning trends, uh, uh, kind of case study reviews. And right now, there's one on TDO, TOD that's up and running to give you a sample of like what that's gonna look like. Um, we're going to be working closely with Jay over the next uh, couple of weeks to figure out the schedule for posting approximately, you know, six or so additional uh, uh, of those types of, uh, like, specific zoning focus study items um, to be posted on the story map that will be informational not only for yourselves but also for the general public. 
Um, so if you have any ideas on that, uh, which I think our schedule will be somewhat flexible, but once you start to see that flowing and those ideas, if um, things come to your mind that you might want to have like a, 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 a information on, we can certainly discuss that and post that at that time. Um, tonight we're going to be specifically talking about uh, two specific things. First, the baseline review report, as well as the open house uh, to kick uh, the public engagement component off with the public next, uh, next Wednesday. And the baseline to, um, review document, I think the important thing to note here is while I am going to review it with you, it is um, a summary of our analysis um, and our directives that we have based on state statutes or things that we've heard from the, the uh, town staff. Um, it's, not a, it's not a complete and like you have to respond and say this is, everything is, is here. It's going to be kind of an ongoing uh, work in progress, but this is what's kind of guiding. Um, there's also two main pieces to the background uh, materials that we're developing for you, and this is part one. And this is really analyzing existing regulations and what we have now today based on existing other documents and state statutes. The second part that we'll be coming back to you next month on is what we call the annotated outline. And that's where we actually put together an outline for the new zoning regulations um, with the basic structure in place. Um, and then we also start to show you where existing regulations are being moved to. It's a very meticulous outline that will continue to grow and will continue to have throughout the process as things continue to change and adjust, but it will be the, the starting point so that you can get a real clear sense of where we're going. And that's what pretty much kicks us off on the baseline review. Uh, and you all do have a copy of this document, right? Um, just making sure we're all looking at the same document. Um, your existing code actually presented us with some unique challenges um, right from the start. And, uh, and the first challenge that we had was that there really is, and I know uh, uh, Jay and Dan will laugh at this because they know, there's really absolutely no structure to it at all. Um, there's 32 existing sections and they just kind of are like thrown out there. Um, there's no real clarity on like introduction, you know, this is all the districts, this is all the site development standards. And even normally when we do a review, we kind of uh, do a review based on that because we know that that's the main substance of the document. So we actually had to take a step back and we had to kind of start the, well not kind of, we actually did start the annotated outline process. Because right from the, in order for us to even do a review of your documents, we had to kind of align things so that I could have my staff review it in, for different types of substances. So what is mentioned at the very beginning of this report um, shows, which is part one, number one, is organization and structure, is that we uh, ended up setting up our, our baseline review based on what we think uh, or what we're suggesting is going to be the new uh, structure of the code. And that is that we looked at, you know, items that should be in an introduction, definitions, districts, use and use related standards, site development standards, and then procedures and administration. And that's basically what part one of our baseline review is, is that we assemble the various existing regulations, we, we kind of assemble them into that type of an order, and then we prepare the various tables that you see on the next uh, uh, couple of pages uh, on those uh, particular subjects. The second part of the baseline review is looking at consistency, compliance, and considerations that we're required to do um, either at the suggestion of town staff or by state statute. Um, one of those uh, state statute things is the plan of conservation and development. And as you all know, um, there has to be consistency between those two documents and the POCD document is just being completed and adopted. So therefore it's an excellent opportunity for us to grab everything out of that POCD and uh, for consideration uh, for the update. Um, I, 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 after having read through everything today, will you be speaking back to the POCD people in terms of their final, if we manage to put a lot of this stuff in? Because so much of what is in the POCD is actually um, instructions to us to look carefully at this at this section, um, whatever in all in all of, all across resiliency or all of, you know, all different subjects. So, Harold, I, I can probably answer that. Um, the expected timeline for completion of the POCD is October. 
So we expect to have that document finalized, adopted, and approved well before we complete the, the zoning reg update. So, you know, if there are any last second changes, either recommended by um, the state of Connecticut or DEEP or some other agency during this commentary period that the POCD is in right now, we have time to kind of pivot and adjust and, and accommodate for it in, in our project here. But if I remember correctly, we discovered that Stratford does have, by law, the right to update at any time the POCD. So I, I'm just interested, I, 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 for once in my time, we would have a doc, two documents that are in sync with each other. I think that is so critical that we put that in as a step in some way so that the work you do ends up in the POCD. That would eliminate half the questions that are left in the POCD, I think. And, and that it was very intentional. The timing of these projects was, was quite intentional. Um, you know, it, it wasn't just uh, by accident that the POCD is winding down as this project is starting to ramp up. We wanted the guidance from the POC to guide the development standards and the uses that the town wants, uh, given all the feedback that we've done over the past year and a half for the POCD. So. And the, I mean, I think what you're saying is obviously a very good point, and we're obviously going to be working very closely with Jay and his staff to make sure um, of what the priorities are and how you know that balance is out with what's in the POCD. It is an excellent time, um, as the report indicates, and in, you know, which is in the second part. The POCD is very robust in its suggestions to the zoning commission. As a matter of fact, it's one of the most robust that I've ever seen. Uh, we had, uh, you know, we pulled everything out that said anything about the zoning code or the zoning commission, um, and there was almost over a hundred different recommendations. Some of them are um, expected, and they cross each other. You know, they might be very similar. Um, but even during this baseline review, I worked very closely with Jay. I pulled them all out. Um, and then him and I looked at them very carefully. We decided which were a, a, a priority currently or which might be a, a longer term priority so that we could kind of set them out. And there will be things that are recommended for the zoning commission, the zoning code that might be long term that may lie outside of this particular I, update. I do understand some of it. The resiliency yep. stuff has not even been developed. The solutions aren't there yet. Right. I understand what you're saying. And we're hoping to lay the groundwork for all that. Any type of thing that doesn't immediately get embedded into these regulations, we're hoping that we lay the groundwork for the future uh, inclusion of them. But Some of them require additional from studies. All the land, for all the landlords, we use the POCD when we, are, when we discuss right. any project with any developer. Right. So, and a lot of the POCD is still able to do that. Yep. And a lot of the POCD recommendations are things to consider. Um, which is good. Um, it doesn't necessarily, I, I don't think there, I can think of off the top of my head if there's any directive that says, you know, this parcel zoning needs to be changed or something that's that strong. Most of it is considerations. Um, and that's really the, the, the consistency issue. If there's something, you know, where you have a recommendation on your, like your future land use plan where this is supposed to be industrial, but right now the zoning indicates that it's residential or something like that, those are the most, uh, important inconsistencies you want to work out and that's one thing that we will definitely make sure and we can guarantee you that that consistency will be met by the time we complete the project this project thank you I broke my sure. own rules sorry <laughs> no I, it was good conversation and we'll have to talk about the POCD I think a little less in a few minutes um, but again the second part is the consistency compliance and consideration section um, and that's, again, POCD, the state statutes, and some of the things that we're required to take a look at or adjust. Um, and then uh, planning and zoning trends and considerations are things that uh, we'll talk about with you in more detail as we go through the process of new, uh, um, new thinking and new thoughts uh, that we might want to embed uh, in the zoning regulation, similar to say EV charging stations or something like that or complete streets um, and actually I was just reading from the very first page because that was just the summary and now I was going to kind of go through it um, more quickly if, if, if that's if that's okay any initial questions any initial questions commissioners anybody Okay, so I've already talked about part one, uh, number one, the organization and structure. 
And obviously, we've, uh, we'll be talking about that more when we look at the annotated outline. Um, part two is looking at the definitions, and um, I think the table lays it out pretty clearly that we are going to be, we've grabbed all of the existing definitions or terms within the code. We put them into a database so we can analyze them to see if there's duplications, redundancies, um, and then what definitions we think we want to add. We're going to continue to keep them in that database. Uh, we will share that with you over time uh, and to get concurrence. And then at the very end of the process, once we have all of the new structure in place, we will feed those terms back into the final you know, Word documents for the, for the document. But that'll be kind of an ongoing uh, effort uh, to make sure that the definitions are meeting the desires of the town and also uh, state regulations and things like that. Um, the third part talks about district and uses. Um, I think, uh, you know, this is one section, uh, as I mentioned, that is lacking a lot of structure in your code currently, uh, where districts kind of, each individual zoning district is in like its own section. And our suggestion is that we grab all those, put them in a one consolidated district section, um, and then we'll analyze each one individually to make sure that they are consistent with like a purpose, uh, the layout of each section, so that they can probably even be uh, taken from the code as like one pagers that might be able to be copied and say, you know, this is your zoning district. Um, and then uh, uses, related to uses, we do want to make sure that we develop a consolidated use table um, for the zoning regulations so that that's very easy and so you can see all the districts and all the various uses and then very clearly see what's, um, would, what would be allowed. Um, and then that would be followed by, um, because it would be indicated in the use table, if there's any use that would require uh, special use regulations, which would, be, which would uh, follow in that particular se section. And I just wanted to clarify the importance of that use table. It makes it much more um, effect efficient for staff to, when someone calls and says, I want to open, um, open up a church, and here's the zone. It just... You go to the C's, and you know if it's alphabetical, this use table, church or religious institution, scroll over to the column where the appropriate zone is, and it says special case. We can easily just communicate what needs to be done, what approvals need to be sought. And so currently, under each zone, you would have currently the way we do it, if someone was in a residential zone, we would go to the residential zone section, and it doesn't have a chart. There are just sentences of uses which it's just not very usable for staff, but it, and we do it every day, so it's much easier for us. But it, just think about someone who is not used to reading the zoning regulations. It's really challenging to understand what you need to do. So this is really going to make a, a drastic improvement uh, to the understandability of the regs. Okay. Uh, moving into site development standards, uh, this is usually a very traditional section of a zoning code that then follows after the uses, um, so that if somebody wants to develop something on their parcel or add a fence or uh, landscape a parking lot, that they can kind of go to a consolidated uh, section where site development standards are listed. Uh, they're usually in alphabetical order, so they're easy to find. Um, and right now, you have a few, um, such as off-street parking, uh, signs, which are... Um, something on erosion and sediment control and removal of topsoil and sand and gravel, um, which is kind of a limited amount of uh, site development standards. We've talked with uh, Jay and we will be hoping to either make additional sections within the site development standards or make linkages to other places within the, uh, the overall town's code. Uh, there's some sections, for instance, like floodplain regulations that some towns include in their zoning regulations, but in the town of Stratford, they're in their own section within the town code. So we'll make sure that there's linkages uh, to that and maybe making a brief statement so that it doesn't appear that it's overlooked. Um, same thing with landscaping, same thing with stormwater management, um, and then lighting is another one that we may do some exploration and have some basic lighting type of site development standards. Um, I think when we get to that section, because the town has so few site development standards currently, um, this, this section could evolve and change as we're developing the annotated outline and getting into that review in more detail. May I, may I ask another question? Would that include our MS4? So, the MS4 is actually uh, compliance with MS4 permit. 
is Later. in the uh, trends section, I believe. Yeah, it's on page 10. And those are things that we maybe touch upon in our zoning regulations or maybe not. And these are trends that, you know, we're all considering, hey, I mean, we talk about these things at, at every zoning commission meeting. Maybe it's time to get them spelled out in some way in the zoning regs, whether it's, uh, as Robert mentioned, maybe we don't take uh, a declarative action uh, or, or we're not the enforcement body of it, but we s at least acknowledge it and direct you to a town code or a state statute so that it doesn't appear overlooked. MS4 is, is, would be as part of those new sections or new topics that we, we want to consider to include in the regs going forward. Uh, yep, very good point. Thanks, Jay. I'm just wrapping up part one of the uh, baseline review, uh, talking with the applications and processes. Um, obviously, this is something that it, we have to work very closely with Jay to kind of, you know, extract all of the existing processes and figure out if like a table or a matrix would be good for that particular discussion, since a lot of that is not currently discussed in the code. Um, so that obviously will be something that we'll work very closely with Jay and his staff to figure out the best uh, way to make sure that that gets included in the, in the uh, code update. Um, we also took a look at the zoning map, um, and the zoning map is, is in fairly good shape. Um, there ha we haven't specifically identified or co coordinated with staff on any you know, slight adjustments or changes, but that will be something that will be coming when we talk about the district's uh, section in more detail um, after the annotated outline. Um, but we did find that the zoning map was, for the most part, in pretty good shape and that and the, your existing online tool that you have to, to direct people to properties was, is, is pretty good. Um, we have in other cases in other towns found a lot of disconnect between the assessor's property cards and what's on the zoning map um, uh, and that can be pretty complex um, but it is good information for the assessor to know because that can, you know, updating that and making sure that that's current can bring additional um, grant fund dollars to the town, grant list dollars to the town and stuff like that. So moving into part two, which starts on page five, we already talked about the POCD, um, but again, the way that it's structured here is we linked um, various recommendations that we pulled out that, that Jay felt were priorities or considerations for this, uh, this particular zoning update. Um, and so we align them with the various different sections of the new code. In other words, whether it was something that was overall uh, structure or whether it really had to do with zoning districts, zoning uses, or site development standards. Um, so we have a lot of things to take a look at and make sure that we can check off as we go through the POCD, or I'm sorry, as we go through each one of these section updates, we'll make sure that we link the POCDs and uh, recommendations for that section into the conversation that we have. Um, and you can see that it's quite, quite robust. <laughs> um, section eight is more of the legal uh, state statute discussion. Uh, this, is, um, this kind of details exactly what we're gonna have to do related to making sure that we're consistent with state uh, statutes. Um, some of it is just uh, adding some definitions or adding a word or two, but some might require us to have a, a greater uh, uh, investigation. Um, like for instance, uh, um, Public Act 2129, which everybody is probably somewhat familiar with, which was the pretty big um, ADU and, um, and housing uh, bill from two years ago. Um, this one does supply some guidance related to the development of ADUs that, uh, which is an ongoing process I know with you uh, that you're already undertaking and that we'll continue to work closely with Jay on that to make sure that when we get to the end that we're meeting whatever state statutes we need to on that particular subject. Robert, which, if I may interrupt, what, you're, what you are putting in your document is closely aligned with the, what the state and the state POCG is suggesting. Um, well, actually, this is within the state statutes, the public act. So it's um, not within their, the state's plan. It's within the, the, uh, the general statutes of the, of, the, of the state, which I know Jay's very familiar with, uh, and, and you've been taking that in consideration with your ADU discussion. Um, yeah, correct. So, you know, the, the, the state statutes essentially enabled municipalities to either opt out or 
allow for uh, certain measures or uh, criteria to be in place um, locally. And so, you know, that's one of the tasks that you all gave me six months ago when we referred, you know, as you all have been considering revising the ADU regulation as state statute allows. It's been referred to that Stratford Housing Partnership and they have since given us a recommendation which um, we haven't discussed yet. I have it attached to this packet. Um, but that's exactly kind of what we're doing. We're making sure we're tying everything together because currently we do have quite a few regulations that are no longer consistent. They were at one time word for word consistent with the state statutes, but the statutes, they change all the time. Um, so we're just trying to kind of bring everything up so we're saying the same thing that state law allows. One interesting note as we wrap up the quick discussion about state statute consistency is on page 10, um, the very last pu public act, which is 2225 related to parking. Uh, this one is actually pretty aligned already with what uh, I've talked with Jay and what is the desire to be considered for an amendment to the zoning regulations. And this has to do with uh, requiring of, um, of EV charging stations on certain size properties and making sure that that gets bedded, uh, I'm sorry, certain size projects and that it gets embedded into the parking uh, and zoning regulations. Um, and I know that that's something that has already been on um, Jay's ongoing list and we've embedded that in a couple discussion points. It was also in the POCD and so that aligns pretty well with the state statute so I don't think we'll have any trouble with satisfying that. Um, the last part just starts to touch base on some of these um, planning and zoning trends that we want to sh uh, for you all to be able to consider for various uh, levels of inclusion into the updated regulations. These are things that are tied to the story map and those subject lines uh, that I said will that'll be have more information. We also have something called like a one pager on these subjects. Uh, that we, you know, to give you some information to get a little bit more clarity on what this subject is, as well as what your code, we take a look at your code and see what your code might be already doing related to that subject, and then some basic uh, recommendations for how you could pursue that a little bit farther in your regulations. Um, in some cases, it might be a lot farther. Um, but those include things like active mobility planning, which is like pedestrian and bicycle inclusion. Um, kind of tied to complete streets. Um, adaptive reuse, which is becoming um, a more uh, interesting topic in, in like TOD areas and, and uh, uh, um, town centers and things like that. Um, affordable housing, which we know is a big subject um, in the state of Connecticut, but it means something very different to every town and we wanna make sure that the nuances to Stratford's uh, discussions and desires on housing affordability and affordable housing kind of get embedded into the zoning regulations um, to the best of their ability or appropriateness. Um, obviously with active mobility, I already mentioned complete streets, um, green development standards, um, low impact and green infrastructure, um, MS4 non-point so, so, uh, non source pollution, which um, Harold, you already mentioned. Transit-oriented development, which we know that the town already has um, a TOD area, um, but it can be expanded or um, continue to be um, further um, enhanced. Um, and we do have that existing, the first informational item on the story map is about TOD. So please explore that to get a little bit more information on that. Uh, Short-term rentals is another issue that's becoming a very current trend um, and your code is currently silent on it, so we'll want to explore that a little bit. Um, as well as urban agriculture and farming, um, this is also a very growing trend and it's also something that fits in pretty well with some of the current zoning districts within the town. Um, and I know that uh, that's something else that uh, Jay has given us on our ongoing list of wanting to add some of those fine tuning of um, you know, urban farms and production of food and things like that, which is very important to the town. And then lastly, things related to climate resilience and climate resiliency, uh, things that, um, you know, the zoning code is not the only location for this type of stuff and for the town to be considered, but there are things that we might be able to uh, include that make sense for the town to consider at this juncture. Um, and those things, like I said, we'll be getting you more information on each one of these items as we move through the process.
And so just one thing I wanted to add to what Robert um, summarized for section nine on these planning trends. Although our regulations are quite silent on, on if not all of these, but vast majority, because of your capacity as zoning commissioners reviewing special case applications, you have quite a bit of latitude in your conditions of approval. So I would say that you're doing a vast majority of these things kind of, or we are doing them together um, on the fly. Hey, we want a letter from an engineer that says, your project has to comply with the town's MS4 stormwater permit. You do that on every single new project. Um, you know, you, you are trying to, you know, reduce impervious area or the Zoning Board of Appeals is Dan's doing that and encouraging them with his Zoning Board of Appeals commissioners. So a lot of these things we're already doing. It's now taking the time to, one, kind of formalize them in the code so that when a developer comes and sits down with us bef six months before they see any of you all, the expectation is there. It's already designed into their project. So it's not you not begging, but negotiating for these additional conditions as part of the project. In relation to that, Robert, we do have a lot of everything that's on here. Jay is absolutely right. Every project, we end up with a sheet of list of 10, 12, sometimes 20 items that we want, expect them to react favorably to. Hopefully, we'll simplify that. <laughs> we won't have to be doing that with every project. Because, but the, my observation when developers come in with projects, if they're local, most of them know about MS4 because they're, do, they're being required by other local communities to do the same thing. Um, when we get developers out of New York, out of Connecticut from New York or the Midwest, they don't necessarily understand some of these things. So I think whatever we do in terms of this rewrite, in terms of our list of 15 or 20 items, the, as many of those that we can put into our existing regulations, the better off we will, we will be. Because it's a giant learning curve for us to even understand what those, the, what those 20 items are. We all have four years on our, on, in our position. It takes you four years to get to have a good understanding of that. I'm not telling you anything you don't know and run across all the time, but I'm hopeful that a lot of these will fleshed out in other areas where they won't be standalone because I don't think of these items as boutique items. I think of these items as very forward-looking items. Definitely. Very good point. So I know that um, we just went through a lot of information very quickly um, and you're just uh, taking a look at this report uh, for the first time or over the last couple of days. Um, if you have any initial questions, um, feel free to ask them now. I think Jay and I talked about um, also giving you until Monday to continue to review the document, um, see if you have any questions that you want to follow up on, um, and then Jay will compile them. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe we can create like an email response um, back with all the questions that you receive. Um, yeah, we wanted to make sure everyone had time over over the weekend, you want to sit Saturday, Sunday morning and kind of read through maybe a bit more of these. Something may come to you, over, you know, over the next four or five days. So um, I would say if, if something does come to you, just make sure you pass them all to Lee, to myself, and I will make sure that we kind of put them together and get a response for everybody and figure out which, which direction we're going to go. What's My question to you, both of you. We are acting as your uh, marketers at this public. Are you going to end up giving us any cheat sheets on any of this? Uh, or is this the sum of what we are actually are going to be talking about? Um, the problem is the majority of our public is not educated even in our current zone. So if we go in and start talking about this, they will not see what is changing, what is being improved, what is being, I think we need to find, even if it's one thing that each of us can have that we can use as a talking point that will allow us to, to look up the information on, like every, everybody here could take ADU as a subject and have a lot to say about it because we spent so much time on it. 
We could, one of us could take MS4, and we have enough background on that. Um, one of us could take the mess that we currently have in zoning in terms of understanding it, um, the 330, whatever the E330 mess that's there. Um, but what I'm asking, what I'm hoping is that we can do what's, what will move this forward the best as possible and also support what you're doing. Carol, are you talking about just for the zoning regs in general or are you talking about in preparation for I'm the open in house? Preparation for the open house yeah. next week? Yes. I think that might be a good transition point to kind of prep for, for next week. But I don't week. want to, listen, I don't want to foreclose questions. Yeah, if there were any other questions that anyone if has. If anybody has questions, I, what I'm suggesting is that we move on. But I don't want to, I, I don't want to cut people off of questions. If you want to have questions, now is the time. More comments. More comments. Um, okay, do, would you just like define short-term rental just so I make sure I, I understand what you mean by that? Exactly. Airbnbs, uh, VRBOs, they have, there's, there's all kinds of new short-term rentals. There are, there are pool, you can rent your pool out to someone for a party for the day now. We don't allow that. Uh, oh, there are people but, doing it. In no, I know, but there's, so, so that's kind of, and, and Robert, if you have anything else that you want to add, I think that's what we're talking about. I would say my first few years here in Stratford, uh, there were very few short-term rentals. But I think that the town has got some really positive momentum going, and there are more and more folks that are coming and spending the weekend down in Lordship or uh, at the Surfside Hotel or up by Booth Memorial Park. It, we're getting more and more calls on it. So I think while we could have been a bit more um, silent on it in the past because it wasn't a major issue, I think now it's time to at least consider if we want to. And, and having some regulations is very important on that because you, 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 de you do need to manage them to a certain degree, you know, because they can be uh, intrusive into a neighborhood but you know you do want to allow people to uh, do on their property what's appropriate but if you have some basic regulations it'll kind of help um, satisfy everybody's needs any other comments or initial questions or anything um, again don't hesitate to forward some additional questions um, as you may digest this a little bit further over the next couple days um, through Monday and we'll get back with you um, Okay, I see a question coming in. Maybe some, something very minor, uh, but we're gonna be addressing all the regulations as they sit now. During the day job that I have, I come across quite frequently and I end up coming back and asking Dan certain questions. Uh, simple one is uh, cars parked on the front yard. People hate that. They go around town, they see it, but right now it's allowable. Is that something we can look at and change as simple as that or is that uh... yeah I, I, I do I think so I think you know one of the things that we keep in mind anytime we're creating a new force enforcement action is do we have the resources to enforce um, and that is an easy I mean that's one that you can solve as any you know any motor vehicle or trailer um, parked on a, in a residential zone has to be on an approved surface. And then somewhere in our definition section, we are defining an approved surface is uh, a driveway with curb, with curb cuts. You know, you define it so it's not just someone paving their entire backyard to store 15 boats in their car collection. You kind of carve it out in a way so that only legitimate driveways are qualifying as an approved paved surface for parking so the answer is yes. Okay. I think one thing that we always, I want to try to make sure that I'm being mindful of my staff um, is the resources and all the tasks that we do um, and how we're able to enforce them. Because I see all the cars all over the front yards too on my drives. So I know what you mean. And I, you know, and I think it's just a follow-up cl clarification question too on the process is that the baseline review is, is kind of an overarching like uh, framework of what, how we're gonna go through the next process and what we're gonna be looking at. 
When we get to, uh, after we get after the annotated outline and we start um, kind of looking at districts as a, as a period of time where we'll review with the town staff and then come back to you and look at districts, you know, we'll also then look at the uses and then probably the site development standards. And I think in the site development standards conversation, which will be coming, you know, the parking regulations is a major one where we're going to have to, you know, we've only indicated that we need to look at it very in a lot of detail, but we are going to have to sit down very carefully with, uh, with Jay and his staff prior to coming to you and saying, okay, what this is what we're, we're now taking a closer look at this particular section. What do we need to change in this section or what, what do we need to add and what, how do we need to modernize it? And I think that point exactly about defining like where you can park, you know, for single family discussion as well as commercial, uh, if that's not in the code now, that's definitely something that should be considered. Can I ask a question on that? Because we've spent, when I was in zoning with Chris, we spent a happy year on parking. Uh, <laughs> we've spent a lot of time in, in all of our land boards dealing with the notion of parking. And I know it's not, it's, every community has the same problem. Um, basically, we're down to one car being legal no matter what when it comes to a lot of the new regulations. When we were working on ADU, we, we came up with some very specific notions of parking for the ADU that was increased by the ADU and how that had to be included into the site plan. And we even discussed at some point impervious pavement or in terms of any expansion of existing driveways had to be impervious so that we were not creating more of a water problem on that site or per, had to be pervious, if I'm correct, if I'm speaking correctly. Um, Robert, is that, is, is that within the bounds of your discussions? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I mean we'll, we'll take a look at the zoning, I mean, the parking regulations, and we'll work, you know, very closely to update them to the best of, I mean, again, we're going to be supplying you with guidance. You all will then tell us exactly what things you're willing to regulate Legally, you can regulate. <laughs> I was going to say, there's a difference between approving a site plan and saying where your parking is going to be for going, moving forward and saying to somebody who pulls their car up on their lawn, you can't park there. So I think we'll have to think about how we, how we can address that. But I understand the issue, and I understand we'll, we'll see what, what we can come yeah. to. But I, I think in general, I mean, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think that, uh, you know, I think most things are in bounds for discussion here. I mean, that's really why we are tapping all of your expertise, expertise as the residents of Stratford. That's why you're not only zoning commissioners, you're the community advisory committee for this project. We want to know what the issues are on your street, right? Or on your, your friend's street or, you know, some, someone that you know is having a problem and it's not addressed and they've called the zoning department and we don't enforce it. This is the time to see are we allowed to and if we are is it something that you know we want to try to address. Well with ADU that's what we were trying to proactively address that. So anything that we can do that you know of someone has developed a right. policy bring it to us because we need a solution. And that's our primary function, is to c can guide you and to supply you with information so that you can make the decisions that are best for Stratford. Um, we're, we're not going to come with just a one code say, this is what your new code should be. It's got to be sharing of information, and then you make the decisions of which directions you want to go in. But we and got lost also, in private parking, public parking, on-street parking. All of those things attach themselves to every project that, that would come before us. And we do not have a clear sense of how we do a uh, parking count for, for any kind of structure in this town. That is, whatever clarity we could have would be greatly helpful to us. Even if it's not, you know, even if, it, even if it's limiting in some way, at least it would be have some clarity. So, you know, before we move on, I just wanted to say if, if there are things that you are thinking about or that you, think that need to be addressed. You don't have to send them all to us in a free for all, of you gotta get it out now. You know, this is a year long project. Maybe everyone kind of keeps a little running document that you know, as we work our way through these sections, you may find an appropriate time 
or you know if you you've got a comprehensive list you know, Robert's been great about me. I have all these running lists, and Dan does, that we send to Robert. Robert just says, don't wait, just send them. We'll catalog them, and we'll, we'll figure out the right time to, to discuss them. So I just encourage you all to do the same. If you've got a little list, pass them along, pass them along and we'll make sure that we, they are a discussion point at some point through this process. Which is actually a great segue to talking about the open house, if it's okay if we if we move that because you started to ask about like the open house and like you were making the assumption that we were going to primarily be talking about the baseline review and in fact we're not um, because the baseline review is still being reviewed by you we can certainly mention and we can indicate to folks what we've done but we really want the uh, open house to be an information it's, a, it's really the first kickoff uh, with the public we want them to be aware we want them first of all to be aware of the project what type of scope we have and what type of goals, um, and then what type of time frame and process that we're undertaking. Um, that's really, I think, our, one of our most important uh, uh, goals so that we know that you know, this is ongoing. We want them to know about the story map so that they can keep, keep up with that, as well as making sure that they're aware of the existing regulations. And, and so we, we, we discussed this a little bit. Are we, we're going to have multiple laptops there so people can actually look at the existing story maps. At least, at least we one. Get like five computers that people can. Yeah, so I, I, I'm definitely going to bring. Uh, it's a, a Surface Pro, which is, can be a laptop, but also a tablet. Um, I think uh, so. We have two of those, and if we you know we feel like we need a third, and Robert has an extra that yeah, that we can use, that's fine. I think two is going to be more than enough um, for folks that want to interact on that level. I think if we have um, the zoning map. Um, and maybe a hard copy too or something like that? Do you have like a notebook bound copy that is at the front counter or something like that? Of, of the zoning map? Yeah, no, the zoning code. The zo we do, yeah. Yeah, because I think we'll have a, we'll have a paper copy too. Um, and so what we're, we're thinking is we're gonna have basically four stations at the open house. Um, as you all know, it's, it's this coming Wednesday, next Wednesday night from, or afternoon and early evening from four until seven at the Baldwin Center in the Great Hall. And we're gonna have a welcome and sign-in uh, station or, uh, or area um, where we're hopeful that um, the Zoning Commission will maybe uh, man that station so you'll be welcoming folks as they come in um, and then kind of directing them to what will be happening next. Um, the very next station would be a uh, introduction or a background station, and this is gonna be a station where we're gonna have a series of a couple boards, just very simply summarizing like what is zoning, uh, you know, what is, the, what is the current status of the town's zoning regulations, why are we doing this now, kind of linking it with the POCD update, um, and then indicating the various uh, processes that we're gonna be undertaking with a simple process diagram and then the resources that are available now for folks to use, which will be that, you know, that there's the uh, online map as well as the online code, as well as um, paper versions as well. So, and then making sure, if I didn't say it already, Lincoln, that there's going to be the story map that people can, you know, peruse not only at the open house but also when they leave and they go home to get more information. So we want to make sure that that's like the most important message that people get that it's just getting underway, and then these are the resources, and these are ways that you can be involved. The next uh, uh, series of, uh, or next station stop will be um, kind of divided into two, an A and a B, one about residential zoning and one about commercial and industrial zoning. Um, and what we're thinking about doing here, well, this would be an actual exercise where people were on the residential side, um, there would be a board and people could take uh, sticky notes and they could indicate what they feel is working, uh, ideas that they may have about the zoning code. You know, things that might be, they think are currently working in the residential areas with zoning or areas where they think they might have some issues. Um, obviously this, uh, you know, may this- I interrupt you one second? Are, are, so then our residential will include any of our park buildings or that? I mean, I think that would be included within residential. So yeah. any home, yeah. homestead or Right. All kinds would be, and so, would be within that. Right. So like for instance, somebody might say the parking situation that you brought up, they're like in my neighborhood or my block, uh, we have a lot of people that are parking on the grass in their property and parking outside the, 
the driveway or they don't have a driveway. That would be something that they could write on the sticky note and indicate on like what's not working in their particular neighborhood. This way, what we're doing is we're just uh, soliciting initial thoughts to get people start thinking about understanding what zoning is, what it can regulate, and what we might uh, want to keep because it's working well, and what might be not working so well that we want to consider. Um, yeah, I think it's certainly conceivable that, you know, in the residentially focused um, board area where we'll have some folks there kind of talking to, to any anyone that stops by they may there may be commercial questions or inquiries inquiries for the residential zones I'm just trying to think of an example you know maybe someone says I wish my neighborhood was more walkable and I could instead of having to drive across town to Big Y I wish neighborhood markets thousand square feet or smaller were allowed in residential zones so there may be a bit of overlap. You never, you just never know what preferences or questions are going to come up. But as Robert mentioned, primarily it's going to be discussing, you know, what you see or what you expect in residential zones in Stratford's and vice versa, the commercial and industrial zones. And, uh, you know, um, Obviously, myself and Dan will most likely be manning this, these particular stations, and obviously Dan has a lot of experience with the zoning regulations. So if people like, don't quite know how to phrase it or like, what the regulations are, so they may not know whether it's a problem or not, we're hoping that to be, between the two of us working with folks at that particular station that we can guide them to kind of clarify how they might want to respond, not, in, not direct them on how to respond, but guide them. Um, and then the same thing on, you know, with commercial industrial. We we basically would ask folks, um, you know, what do they feel is working in some of the resident um, commercial corridors or commercial areas, and what isn't. Um, you know, this is where we might get some um, comments about parking or signage or the types of businesses or the lack of businesses. Um, so that way we can kind of start to, uh, you know, get a good sense of like whether uh, we're targeting the right things with the planning trends and the other discussions that we're putting together um, in the annotated outline. Um, I, our goal would be that as people write, and then this is also an opportunity where I think um, we would certainly want all the commissioners that show up, uh, this is also an opportunity for you to uh, put your comments too on what Jay was just indicating on your ongoing list. So, you know, we want you to all participate with the activities as well. Um, so if you have some things that you know that you want to make sure get mentioned, if it has to do with runoff or green technology or something like that, that you're having the opportunity to uh, indicate that to us. Uh, we will compile everything that gets put up on these boards and we will share that back to you in a summary report so that we can continue to have that um, along with all the other tools that we're starting to assemble to help us when we have to make decisions about m making uh, amendments to the zoning regulations. Um, and then lastly, the last station that we're talking about having is starting to uh, take this pathway down towards like new ideas or new thinking to kind of open the door even though there's going to be discussions on that both on the story map as well as uh, one pagers that will be coming later but we want to start uh, getting a sense of how folks might feel about certain green technology or green infrastructure. Well that's what I was going to suggest. Today I went onto Metrocon's uh, site and they actually had a tree cover uh, story map for it includes Stratford. I don't know. It was done in 2019, oh. so it's not too old yet. But it's it's still. We're going to end up. I know part of our audience is going to be people that are very interested in how is Stratford doing in terms of resiliency. How is Stratford doing in terms of right. our natural environment and all of that. So if there was some way we could give them hope before they walk out the door, that we're we're keeping all of this active in our. Right, and I think that's why we're hoping that while they might focus on their neighborhoods or the commercial corridors, and we know that that might focus more on the negative, we wanted to try to end it, it with like uh, something positive or thinking about, uh, you know, new thoughts that maybe people haven't had before. Um, my staff person, um, Taylor, who will be working that station, is very knowledgeable on uh, environmental and resiliency type of measures. Um, and she's going to be coordinating that particular station. And it will be, it will be a preference type of station where there will be, um, you know, uh, a discussion about the green technology. She'll be able to answer questions on further explaining, like, what that is. But then there will be a series of columns, like, you know, uh, like rain gardens or green roofs 
um, you know, low impact development. And then, you know, if people don't know what they are already, Taylor will be able to kind of explain that and then people will be able to, you know, put dots on which uh, items they feel that they uh, are most comfortable with or, or would like to have more information on too. And you might have, you might find a lot of that stuff in our resiliency report that we did in 2021 maybe. That we, we actually came up with specific things that, in terms of rain gardens and all of that. So. Correct. And, and I just wanted to make sure that the commissioners all understand that we're not plucking these things just out of thin air. We are, we are taking guidance from the POCD, and, and that's where a lot, how a lot of these topics are kind of, we're, that's why we're presenting them, because the POCD is guiding us to, not mandating us to do these things, but guiding us to explore them, flush out the ideas and determine we like this or we don't like this for whatever reason. So I just want to make sure that you understood we're not plucking them out of thin air, that we've gotten guidance from another adopted document or soon to be adopted document. It opened my eyes. Go into the new the draft POCD and just search it for zoning. And you will find amazing. It's scary. It's scary. It's scary. Uh, that's where the hundred that's where the hundred items come from. But there are very specific suggestions that are the result of five years of studies and work and everything that we've done in Stratford. Uh, but take a look at that because it really is informative. You realize, oh, this is what we need to do next, but this is something we've spent huge amounts of human capital making happen. Yeah, and although it can be intimidating as staff, and, and uh, elected officials volunteering their time to see all these tasks. I mean, I am very proud of all of the work that and um, objectives that we have executed from the last POCD um, that we're doing right now. And I think that a lot of the things that in, in a lot of the guidance for the, the new POCD we're all already working on. So can be intimidating, but I know that there's just, there are so many of these things we're already working on, not only myself and, and staff, but you all, it's all on your mind. So um, I just wanted to add, so, and, and just go over, so anyone who's coming to the meeting, the open house, so we've got the sign-in table, which is kind of like our welcoming group, uh, so that we get folks to sign in and we can get a little distribution list to make sure people stay informed and get a head count as to how many folks we had participating. And then we have the four additional tables. I think, you know, Robert and I and, and, and Dan and Susmita, we talked a little bit about, you know, who was, you know, set up to, to maybe man the, the different stations. Um, you know, one of the ideas that we had, and we're really going to leave it up to you, but what we were proposing is maybe we have two commissioners uh, work the sign-in table and kind of, you're our warm-up act. You get people feeling like it's gonna be, it's not intimidating. This is just kind of conversation. Any, there are any, any questions um, are good here. And then myself and maybe another commissioner want, that wants to uh, take the introduction station boards and just kind of give, give any uh, attendees the 30,000 foot view of what it is we're doing here in this room, in this room. And um, uh, as Robert mentioned, he and Dan will most likely um, folk have the residential and commercial industrial focused boards. We would love to have one or two of you there helping to listen uh, to what you're hearing, because uh, that'll probably guide some of your questions and input into the regulations as we work through them. Um, and then maybe someone sitting with Taylor or working with Taylor uh, at the last station. And um, you know, don't be intimidated. You, you all know way more than I think you probably give yourselves credit for. And if you're unsure, that's why we are also there. You just say, you know, I'm not sure. You know, Dan or Robert, what do you think? Um, and we'll be there to make sure conversation's kind of, kind of moving along in the right direction, so. Um, we, we did, Jay, we did something like this with one of our other group open house meetings. I think it was on resiliency, maybe it was the South End uh, resiliency project that we were working on. And everybody there who was representing the project essentially would glom on to someone coming through the door and say, let me go with you. Let's go on a quest. Let's go ask questions. What questions do you have? Let me take you over to this place and 
let you can ask them your question because I don't know the answer, but they they might know more about it. And then you can drop them off and go on to the next person. And that was I thought very successful because the people that were coming in the door really felt like they were being attended to, and really felt like we were paying attention to them in some good way. Yeah, and I think one of the things that we've talked about in a lot of our meetings is it's just we've got to be flexible. You never know if the five Greyhound buses of people are going to show up or it's just going to be us looking at each other for a few hours. You just, you never know. So we'll, we'll be flexible. You guys can switch out, switch stations, bounce around. You know, I think that we'll just, we're going to keep it flexible, keep it kind of relaxed. And um, that's usually what we're going to get the best, we're going to get the best input if we can kind of cultivate that kind of flexible and relaxed environment. So. You're going to get badges? Badges? Okay. Name tags. Yeah. yeah. Lenny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the social aspect of a, um, <laughs> one of the uh, reasons why I prefer the open house uh, structure for like these type of work uh, work um, uh, work sessions and things like that is because of the social nature of them because I think if you um, rather than just having everybody come in and sit down and at a chair and then we have this presentation up front where they're not really engaging when there's this social nature and you're engaging we're engaging people are talking to their neighbors um, there's no pressure on how long they stay or when they come as long as it's between four and seven um, you, most people leave with a very positive attitude about it so therefore they get kind of excited about something that maybe is not so exciting um, and that they will be maybe participating and wanting to come back. So that's, that's, our, that's our goal. Yeah, and I think you all are in the downrange in, in, in the shooting gallery enough where it kind of changes that up a little bit too where it's not a presentation where someone disagrees and starts yelling from the audience and you all are behind a table up on a stage being like, oh, now what? No, you're, you, it, it's, it's just, I think it's a different, more comfortable environment that it, it really works well for public participation. I think it's going to work well. And it's perfectly all right to say I don't know the answer to that. It actually wins your audience in some ways to say, let's find out what the answer or let's see where the answer might be. So you don't have to be an expert. Or that's something good for us to explore throughout the process. Yeah. Let's put it down on a sticky note so that we capture it. Any uh, questions or thoughts or? Um, Can I put you on the spot? Lenny, any questions? Uh, Dion. Well, I'll tell you honestly, reading through all those documents took me a whole day. So I thought of you. <laughs> It was a lot of work. Deborah. Okay, Jim. Chris. Nothing really at the moment, but I just, I, I like the structure that you've laid out um, as far as, uh, uh, you know, creating an organized volume. And, you know, I think the tricky part of there is just to be, you know, making sure that we know where things go from the existing version to the new version. So, um, but that I'm sure so we'll be tackling that as we go through the process. So, thank you. Rich. Linda. I hope you guys will be there because that will give us eight people instead of five people. So. We might end up having more commissioners than we have audience, but that's the way it'll be. <laughs> I mean, uh, bring your friends and family, too, so that they can participate. Neighbors. I am putting, getting this in our local e-newspaper. E, e so that's about 1,500 people that will see it. So that might be yep. 15 people, but we never know. So. Do you have any extra of the flyer um, by any chance? I don't have any extra of the flyers with me right now. OK. If like people wanted to post it at their church or some other location or something.
It yeah. has QR code on it that takes you right to the, the project website. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email it out to everybody with a link to the story map, which is the project website, and you all feel free to distribute to the uh, residents in your district or anyone on, on your listserv. And tomorrow, the story map with all the text is going to be in Stratford Crier. So if you know anybody who wants information, you'll, you'll find it there. Yeah, I, I think that I'm going to run to the store. I'm going to pick up, a, you know, a box of snacks and, and a rack of waters. Yeah. No Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Coffee? Uh, well, no, I'll okay. do Dunkin'. I don't care. I would, See, this is why you don't offer root because it spirals into uh, a full catered meal. I, I understand. Cookies do make people happy. Cookies make people happy. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So all right. Rich, we... we'll send you the bill, okay? <laughs> are we... Dan, do you want to say anything? You've been taking notes. Do you have any no, I'm, I'm help good. you can give us? I'm observing, taking it all in. Okay. Uh, before we lose Lenny, yeah, lose anything else, here. anybody? Would someone like to give me a, what well, first? Remember, our next open house is Wednesday, September 20th at four, from 4 to 7. Our next regular administrative public hearing is Wednesday, September 27th at 6 p.m. And there we have, we have items on the agenda, so be ready. Um, there will be audio for that, I'm sure. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to add that I did include the letter from the Stratford Housing Partnership. It was, oh, not yes. it was not expected that this be discussed this evening, but I thought if I could get it to you now, you all could have time to kind of look at what they said and maybe, and I'll put it on the agenda uh, towards the end of the month. Um, and if any alternates who aren't able to attend the next meeting, please feel free to send me any emails directly and I'm happy to, to make sure I relay those. And you'll notice it's to her, it's being sent to me. I recused, I am on the Stratford Housing Partnership. I recused myself from voting on this, but I think the Housing Partnership did a decent job sending this information, which is, has been, will be changed by current Connecticut state law, and actually will allow us to do a couple things that when this document was, letter was written, were not current. Now they're current as of reading this past week. Uh, so, uh, but in any case, I'm still, I'm happy that Stratford Housing Partnership is working on affordable housing. That, that's one thing that really will help us in the future. Anybody want to give me a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, seeing no further business, I make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Second. Oh, second. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Three. Oh, Lenny. Four or zero. <laughs> From the parking lot.